The next learning objective is given a patient uh, living with HIV, assess the need for opportunistic infection primary prophylaxis. So primary prophylaxis basically means that uh, the patient is at risk of getting the infection but doesn't have the infection yet. We're trying to prevent it from happening for the very first time. So for PCP specifically in HIV patient, if the CD4 count is less than 200, you need to provide the patient with PCP prophylaxis. And the preferred agent is uh, Bactrom. So trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, uh, the most evidence is with one uh, double strength uh, PO uh, daily um, for the most patients. Now, if they cannot tolerate that because of adverse effects, only then you can give them a smaller dose. So the smaller dose is likely to help with the adverse effects. In addition to CD4 count less than 200, if someone has CD4 less than 14%, as well as if somebody's CD4 is uh, borderline, uh, so it is above 200, but it's less than 250, and you cannot monitor the CD4 every three months, um, you know, because of, uh, you know, whatever reason, so either uh, access to care, uh, because uh, there's a very high chance that this patient might drop less than 200, these patients also could benefit from PCP prophylaxis. Now, in people who cannot tolerate uh, Bactrom even with a lower dose, there are some alternatives listed here. Uh, so specifically, you can use Dapson uh, monotherapy. Um, however, uh, we're gonna talk about toxoplasmosis uh, prophylaxis in a minute, but basically Dapson monotherapy does not uh, pre, uh, does not provide uh, prophylaxis for Toxoplasma gondii, so that's important to know. Uh, now, if you use da Dapsone in combination with uh, pyrimethamine and leucovarin, uh, that also gives you protection against Toxoplasmosis. Uh, other options include aerosolized uh, pentamidine, so this is an inhalation, uh, which does not protect uh, against uh, uh, toxoplasma. And then, of course, atovaquone, uh, which uh, must be taken uh, with food for absorption. Now, atovaquone is actually uh, pretty expensive. Uh, so typically, uh, Dapsone, um, you know, if someone cannot tolerate uh, Bactrom, typically Dapsone would be the next option. Uh, you know, if, they, if atovaquone is available, uh, you know, it, Typically, this can be, uh, cost can be a problem. And then how long do you do PCP prophylaxis? So you continue PCP prophylaxis until the patient has CD4 greater than 200 for at least three months. And this is obviously, you know, if the patient is not on ART, you have to start ART in order to get the CD4 count up. Otherwise, CD4 count is not going to go up. So uh, here are the recommendations for toxoplasma. So in order to do prophylaxis, so the CD4 count has to be less than 200, but also you want to see toxoplasma IgG positive. So uh, prophylaxis is only re uh, recommended in patients with uh, IgG positive uh, patient. That means they have been exposed to it. So they're uh, at risk of developing disease. And by disease, I mean specifically encephalitis. So the IgG basically tells you that the org they've been exposed to the organism, but they don't necessarily have encephalitis. What you're trying to do is to prevent the, or, uh, you know, this organism causing encephalitis. So the encephalitis part is what we're trying to prevent. So the preferred agent is also Bactrom. Uh, you know, just like before, uh, you know, you give it a double strength uh, once a day. If the patient cannot tolerate it, uh, then, uh, you know, a lower dose, uh, including uh, three times weekly, may be an option. And if they absolutely cannot uh, tolerate uh, Bactrom, then we have alternatives. So Dapsone, as I mentioned previously, Dapsone monotherapy is not appropriate. It doesn't, uh, it's not effective. So it has to be Dapsone in combination. Um, and then we have uh, atovacone, which has to be taken with food. So how long to do uh, prophylaxis? So you continue prophylaxis until CD4 count is more than 200 for at least three months, um, you know, once the patient starts ART. 
And then lastly, for disseminated Mac, uh, you know, drug of choice are macrolides. So Mac, for Mac, you need macrolides. So azithromycin. And pay attention to the dose here. So these are large doses, but once weekly. So 1200 milligram of azithromycin uh, once weekly. Uh, so azithromycin is preferred for prophylaxis uh, because it's better tolerated than less drug drug interactions. Clarithromycin 500 milligram BID um, has more drug interactions. Also, uh, it's too many pills, so you have to take it twice a day. Whereas azithromycin, you do once a week. It's easier for compli for for compliance for for the patient. And um, of course, who needs a MAC prophylaxis is if the CD4 count is less than 50, and that's after ruling out active disseminated MAC. And it has to be not on fully suppressive ART. So this is a new recommendation. So before this ART part is not uh, a part of indication. Um, basically, what they're saying is that ART is so effective that if someone is on ART, there's no way their CD4 would be less than 50. Uh, or if it is less than 50 and you started ART, it's going to go above 50 very quickly. So if someone is on ART, they don't really need MAC prophylaxis. Now, alternative to macrolides includes um, uh, rifabutin, um, basically uh, once a day, and the dose had to be adjusted, uh, you know, if um, there are uh, agents in the ART that will uh, interfere, uh, or I should say interact uh, with this drug. And we will talk more about these uh, class of rifamycins in general when we talk about tuberculosis. And basically for duration, uh, you know, you can discontinue upon initiation of effective ART. So essentially nobody really needs MAC uh, prophylaxis anymore.